Good morning and welcome on what I consider this to be a top 10 fall day. So glad to have you all here. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise, Praise the Lord. Let's stand together as we join in our opening hymn. We will use verses 1, 2, and 3 of hymn number 711 for all the saints. Verses 1, 2, and 3. Christ is with us. Amen? Amen. Good morning and welcome to Memorial United. I'm Ron Beaton, one of the pastors. What a joy it is to be with you today. Today's an extra special day as we celebrate All Saints Sunday, um, the Sunday following All Saints Day. And uh, that's why we got a little extra Dixieland going for you today. So it's a gift to have you all with us today. I want to extend a special welcome to any guests who are with us. If you're a guest, we hope that you'll fill out a Connect card from the attendance pad um, as it gets passed down the row um, so we can get to know you a bit better. You can also scan the QR code that's on your bulletin, and that'll take you to a Connect form online if you'd rather do it that way. But we're glad you're here, and we have a gift for you on your way out the door. I also want to welcome those who are joining us on our Facebook live stream. We're glad you're joining us as well. If you want to get connected, go to our website, memorialumc.church and click on our Connect tab. Let's continue our worship with our opening prayer. Judge Ray? Please join me with me in prayer. Almighty God, you, you have, have knit together, together your, your elect in, in one, one communion, communion and fellowship. fellowship. In the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord, grant us grace so that the following of your hope will be in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which you have prepared for those who sincerely love you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite all the children to come forward who will be who would like to come for children's moments. Good morning. 
Happy All Saints Sunday. This is an exciting day. So if I, if you sneeze, or if I sneeze, I, what are you supposed to say? Bless you. Bless you. Oh, it means excuse me? Yeah, what else could you think bless you might mean? If we say, sometimes we say God bless you, right? What do you think that means? Yeah, you, it's something that gets forgiveness for sneezing. Yeah, that's a good thought. Well, some, it actually came, there was a time when people got sick. It was called the plagues, right? People would, they'd get really sick. And it started, people would say, God bless you. And I hope you don't get the plague, right? Ring around the rosy song. Yeah, that's another, that's another children's moment some other time. Yeah. Today, we hear that Jesus There's blessed are, well, you'll hear about the poor in spirit, blessed are those who are meek, and different things. So what do you think God means when he says, God bless you there? Yeah. With your love. Yeah, God blesses you with your love. It means God honors them, loves them, and God Sometimes we use that word, and we don't even really think about what it means. But today, I think we think about how God blesses us, how is God with us, how God loves us, how God is with us, even though it seems unusual that God would be with us, right? Do you think you remember that, that God always with you? That's how God blesses us? Yep. All right, so let's pray together. Let's put our hands together and repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for your son Jesus, who is always with us. And because you are with us, we can love others and love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you all can go with Miss Casey if you want to children's moments, or you can go back to your seats.
open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us this day. Amen. Psalm 34, praise for the deliverance from trouble. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see what the, that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The Lord redeems his servants, the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Our next hymn this morning is number 709, Come, Let Us Join Our Friends Above. I invite you to stand as you're able and sing with us verses 1, 2, and 4. Please remain standing as you're able for the reading of the gospel. Today's gospel lesson comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you were at the All Hallows' Eve service this past uh, Tuesday night, you got to hear some beautiful music with bagpipes. That was exciting. But you also got to hear um, some vignettes that were delivered by our marvelous readers. You heard about Nino, the trailblazing woman whose evangelistic fervor was so great that she converted the entire country of Georgia to faith in Jesus, including baptizing the king and queen of Georgia. Um, in fact, Nino is still, hundreds of years later, is the most common name given to girls there. You heard about Farmington's most celebrated citizen and member of this congregation, Daisy Baker, who spent 50 years teaching African-American students in Farmington, sometimes 75 students at one time in one room, grades K through 8. She was the Sunday school superintendent and played the organ that sits in the back of this sanctuary now, and back when it was at St. Paul Methodist Episcopal Church, uh, before it merged with this one. She once locked herself in a bathroom to pray, and she refused to leave until she had been guaranteed that Farmington Public Schools was integrated and black and white students would learn together. But it was the other vignette that I thought of uh, when I was preparing today's sermon. Today, I was thinking of the great deacon, Lawrence of Rome, who oversaw the church's finances in Rome, and uh, giving alms, who was the one who would give the alms to the poor. The Roman emperor demanded that all priests and deacons be killed, and uh, that all of the precious metals and real estate be confiscated by the Roman treasury. Once this edict had been handed down, Lawrence acted swiftly. He sold all of the church real estate, he took all of the expensive altarware, all of the other jewelry and, and all of the ex other expensive treasures of the church, and he sold it and he distributed every bit of that money to the poor in the community. The Roman prefect came knocking, looking for the treasures of the church, believing they had to have been hidden somewhere, and he demanded that Lawrence bring him every valuable thing that the church owned. And so Lawrence brought the prefect, the poor, the crippled, the blind, the suffering, and said, here, here are the treasures of the church. The church is truly rich, far richer than your emperor, Lawrence said. That didn't set well with the Romans. And so it ultimately led to his death over a hot gridiron. Legend has it that he was so filled with the Holy Spirit while he was being tortured, he said, turn me over, I'm done on this side. But as I read the gospel reading this week, I thought about Lawrence's word here. These, these are the treasures of the church. The gospel reading for All Saints Day is the Beatitudes, which comes from Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount. You probably know the scripture pretty well, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. There's nine of these. Blessed are they who, blessed are those who, phrases. No matter how, how many times I hear the Beatitudes, I'm consistently taken back by what they say. Blessed. <laughs> blessed are those, blessed? Are, are, are you sure, Jesus, that's the word you want to use? Right? Blessed? Blessed are the meek? Blessed are the poor in spirit? Blessed. Really? It makes you think about the way that we use the word blessed in society. We use it so frequently and so flippantly. Often it's associated with a hashtag, hashtag blessed, right? 
It's when you want to show off your latest vacation or your new car or what swanky party you were invited to. You can post your picture on Instagram, right? Hashtag blessed. It's uh, on a whole list of things that you can buy, a whole host of things that you can purchase, right? You can buy blessed jewelry and blessed picture frames and T-shirts and license plate covers. There is even a swimsuit as if to say, I am blessed to have this smoking hot body. I have got to get me one of those. Um, one person said, hashtag blessed. It's kind of like saying, hashtag I'm bragging. <laughs> The word blessed is so closely associated with the prosperity gospel in the United States. The prosperity gospel is this uniquely American idea that if we are faithful to God and put enough money in the offering plate, wink, wink, then you will be wealthy and healthy and happy because God blessed you for what you've done. We can think of TV preachers that promote this theology, right? Kate Bowler is a professor that I had, a, a professor of ours at Duke Divinity School. You may have heard her on different things. She's made the rounds a bit. But she's written a book on the history of the prosperity gospel in the United States. Um, and her book is titled Blessed. <laughs> she rightly says, and I'm paraphrasing here, that when people say I'm blessed, it's kind of a, a false humility, like saying, I am so fortunate to have these wonderful things that God has given me, but I sort of a little bit deserve it. <laughs> God blessed me, uh, but it's because I worked hard to get it, right? We also use the word blessed with a host of cliches. I am blessed and highly favored, or I'm too blessed to be stressed, or well, bless your heart, which we in Kennett know that means a whole lot of things, right, when you're on the boot heel. Christians might say, have a blessed day, which is not a bad thing to say, but, but what is it that Jesus means when he says blessed? Jesus uses the word in the Gospels in a way that seems so distant from a hashtag or an Instagram post. Imagine with me how jarring this really is, right? So blessed are the poor in spirit. So imagine the the social media post of a family who's just had the rug pulled out from them just one too many times. It's a family that doesn't even know glib happiness. There's only a little hope that maybe one day things will get better. Hashtag blessed. Jesus uses this word differently. Blessed are the meek. Now imagine a photo, right, of someone whose timidity is exacerbated by enduring a life of violence. Speaking up for themselves has never worked out so well. Blessed are the meek. Blessed. Blessed are those who mourn. We see pictures of those in Lewiston, Maine. Pictures of those who mourn and grieve following another senseless shooting. There is no hashtag blessed there, right? And today is the Sunday we call All Saints Sunday, right? Many of you may be mourning today. You think about those whom you love and you see no longer. You think about the long list of names that we read on Tuesday night, candles that were lit in their memory, bells tolled, and you mourn. Blessed? James Howell's one of my favorite preachers. He points out that the Beatitudes... These blessings, they're not prescriptive, right? Jesus is not saying, well, if you want to be blessed, you better make sure you go out and impoverish your spirit a little bit. Go out and be a little meeker, be a little more, endure a little more suffering, mourn a little bit more, then you'll receive my blessing. Nor do I think these beatitudes are saying that people who are poor are just supposed to be happy in their suffering because they know they're spiritually rich. The Beatitudes are more, I think, of an indictment on the society of the time for having forgotten its responsibility to the neighbor, to their neighbor. And so for Jesus to say they are blessed is to show that while the society often overlooks them, they have found favor and honor and hope with God. They are blessed by God. They're, they're honored by God. And the ones who receive the blessing given by Jesus are those for whom life is difficult or whose life is not celebrated by the rest of culture. Jesus doesn't offer blessings here, at least not here, 
Jesus doesn't offer blessing to the theological giants in this passage. Jesus doesn't offer a blessing to those who have conquered the heathens. Jesus isn't offering a blessing to those who are the most pious. He doesn't offer blessing to those whose life looks best on a resume. It's not the well-educated, the well-connected, the well-liked, the well-groomed. He blesses all kinds of people, all kinds of down and out, extremely vulnerable, and at the bottom of the ladder people. Why? He blesses them to proclaim that God regularly shows up in mercy and blessing just where you expect God least to be. With the poor rather than the rich. Those who are mourning rather than celebrating. With the meek, with the peacemaker, rather than the strong and the victorious. This is not where citizens of the ancient world look for God. They would expect an all-powerful God to be amongst the powerful. Quite frankly, it's not what citizens of our culture expect either. It's not where we look for the hashtag blessed. That's where God is. What makes these blessings from Jesus so poignant is that they could, they could very well be autobiographical. I think they are autobiographical for Jesus, right? Jesus is the poor. Jesus is the one who mourns. Jesus is the meek, the suffering, the peacemaker, the persecuted. Blessed are those who are like Jesus. And if you're like Jesus, you don't have to seek out ways to be more meek or more poor in spirit, there's a good chance that those things have already found you if you're a follower of Jesus. That's why I was so reminded of Lawrence of Rome, because he knew that God blesses, honors, shows divine favor to those who have little now. I think of the old hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Third verse, Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise, Thou, my inheritance, now and always, thou and thou only, first in my heart. High King of heaven, my treasure, thou art. If the Beatitudes are embodied in Jesus' earthly life, blessed are the poor in spirit. If the Beatitudes are embodied in Jesus' earthly life, then the resurrection is the embodiment of the reversals that Jesus talks about, right? Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, are fed. <coughs> Those who mourn are comforted. Those who are extended mercy, they receive mercy. We know that Jesus is the one who just consistently turns things on their head. Just as Jesus took death itself and redeemed it, so too Jesus will redeem people's plight. That's what these blessings are about. Jesus joins the suffering, joins the lowly. Jesus joins the suffering and lonely only to ultimately, when it's all said and done, redeem those realities, to turn those things upside down. The ethics of the kingdom of God, the ethics of Jesus, turn the world upside down, inside out, and turn our boastful hashtags into authentic, blessed, mournful ashes. And turns, turns a little bit of bread some wine, signs of death, into the life-giving wedding supper of the Lamb where all the saints gather to feast together. This table, in some ways, may look like defeat, right? Bread becomes a broken body. The cup becomes blood poured out. Yet this is where the blessing of Jesus flows to the life of the world. This is the feast of victory for our God. He who was persecuted, poor, merciful, righteous, meek, peaceful, extends a word of blessing to those who were also those things. He blesses us with a taste of a glorious future. But he does more than give us a taste of a glorious future with God. In this meal... God blesses us with his very presence. He gives himself to us so that we might consume his virtues. 
and for that we are blessed indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm going to invite Sue and Mike to come forward at this time, and let's all stand together as we affirm our baptism with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated. At this time we have um, the joy of welcoming Mike and Sue Wallace into the life of the church. Um, you probably already know them. They've been very active now for almost two years. Two years and, uh, and they are transferring their membership from another United Methodist congregation. Um, they both have a lot of gifts that they offer. Particularly you'll probably know Sue from her musical gifts that she's offered the church and her wonderful voice. Um, I know that many of you have also been praying for Sue and for Mike. Sue's had a lot of health stuff, and we pray for her as she continues to heal, and we give thanks to God that you're able to be with us today. Um, so I ask you now, um, as a member of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. Mike told me earlier that he was going to say she will, but... <laughs> He said, I will, so I heard it. As a member of this congregation of Memorial United, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say, I will. And then we take things a little step further here at Memorial and commit ourselves to the rule of faith. Um, it's a way that we kind of show a balance in our approach to uh, discipleship and committing ourselves to Christ. So I ask you, Will you witness to Jesus Christ in the world and follow his teachings through acts of compassion, justice, worship, and devotion under the guidance of the Holy Spirit? If so, say, we will. Let's welcome our newest Memorial United members. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with God and with one another. If that's you, I invite you to join together in our prayer of confession. It'll be on the screen or it'll also be found on page 12 in your hymnal. Merciful God. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. 
Glory to God. Amen. As a forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer our tithes and our offerings to God. You can give in the offering plate. You can text your offering to 73256, put Memorial UMC in the amount you want to give, or you can go to our website, memorialumc.church, and click on the Give tab. Let's give of ourselves to God and to one another. If you will, please remain standing, if you're able, for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You sit in holy array upon your throne as angels and elders sing your praises, for you are overflowing with love. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we know that we are your children, beloved, and we shall be like him when he is revealed to us. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, and he gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is ours. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, 
that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. It is with great joy that we remember all of those who have gone before us and now dwell in your glorious kingdom. Larry Affalter, Pat Allen, Don Asher, Donald Barton, Donna Barton, Jimmy Barwick, Sam Burkbicker, Laura Bokenkamp, Judy Griesacher, Juanita Brewer, Marlis Brockmiller, Adam Burkemper, Tanya Cook, Lynn Kreitz, Megan Eaton, Margan Frankovich, Margaret Frankovich, Larry House, Clayton Hoover, Mary Hudson, Belindria Johnson, Barbara Younger, Evelyn Kincaid, Ralph Lamert, Joe Lincoln, Jack Little, Sean Martin, Margaret Ann McCloyd, Jan Merrill, Anna Grace Meyer, Lois Ann Meyer, Jan Miller, Loretta Nyer, Bob and Shirley Knowlton, Jerry Rapp, Carol Robinson, Willie Rogers, Charles Scoggin, Bill Setzer, Amy Sherrill, Eddie Sykes, Pete Sowens, James Stone, Jim Tanner, Ida Taylor, Jim Taylor, Anna Jean Wade, Bob Watson, Victor Bus Thomas, Linda Ball Walters, Mary Wiley, George Michael Williams, Mike Williams, Michael Zeratore, and for all others who we name in our heart before you now, may we ever be united with them. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit, in your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with boldness we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. They will receive communion by intinction. That means that you will be given a piece of the bread. You'll take a step to the outside and then um, dip it in the cup and spend some time in prayer. Um, you, uh, then you can make your way back to your seats around the outside. Do know that in the United Methodist Church, we have an open table. That means we don't see this as our table, but the Lord's. And Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him. So if that's you, we hope that you will come and receive this meal today. Um, we recognize your baptism, and you are welcome here. The feast is set. Won't you please come to the feast? There is a gluten-free option. If you need that, just let the server know.
Christ given to you. Body of Christ given to you by
spending our forty percent today. Our closing hymn today is number seven oh three in your hymnal, Swing Low Sweet Chariot, and we will sing verses one, two, and three. few announcements as we send you out this week. First, this Saturday is the Harvest Potluck and Pie Auction. It's a major fundraiser for the United Women in Faith and their mission work. It's on Saturday at 5 p.m. down in the Fellowship Hall. There are sheets out here in the foyer where you can sign up to provide a pie to be auctioned, let them know if you're coming so they have enough food, and tell them what side dish you're bringing. Then on Monday the 13th, so a week from tomorrow, we'll have our next pub theology at 12 West. That will be the only one for the month of November uh, with the Thursday one falling on Thanksgiving. I figure you don't want to try and meet up somewhere. Uh, and then, uh, believe it or not, Help the Hungry Bake Sale is less than two weeks away. Uh, it is on the 18th, Saturday the 18th from 9 to 1 a.m. down at St. Joe Gym. So we invite you to join us there. And then uh, with the holidays also comes our bell ringing season. Uh, we have Mondays beginning the Monday after Thanksgiving from noon to 8 p.m. So be thinking about what slot you might want to ring a bell for to raise money for uh, United Way. Thank you, Pastor Chris. And uh, my guess is you won't want to leave during the postlude today. You might want to stick around and hear the whole thing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord make his face turn his face towards you and give you peace. And all of God's people sonorously said, Amen. Amen.